So we have a video. Uh, we have a, bit, a video, and I'm gonna. St- is it okay if I stand here and watch it with you? Fantastic. Can we just put that that video on? Two Germans, two very different Germans. Mercedes E63 AMG S, a Bruiser in a very sharp suit. Audi RS7. It's got one one trick up its sleeve. That's a four-wheel drive car. The Audi is less powerful. It's a four-liter, 412 kilowatts, up against this big muscly German, five and a half liters, 430 kilowatts, but rear-wheel drive. It was quite capable yesterday. We did all of the performance testing. Five though. Therein lies the big difference. It's going to be close. Game face is on. Let's go. Now there's no doubt about who won there, no doubt. We have a BMW driver here, we have an Audi driver here, and we have a Mercedes-Benz driver here. I believe they've done some kind of update, but praise God. The point that I want you to see is the gap between those cars. Now two years ago, he said, I want to accelerate you. I spoke that word in this house. Some of you have accelerated, some of you haven't. But thank God his word is forever. And you can still accelerate. You can go from zero to 100 in seconds like that car does. But the thing that I wanted you to see tonight is the gap between. And I believe that God, that is what God is doing right now. He is increasing the gap between. Uh, and, and there is a clear difference between those cars. And there is a clear difference between the children of God and the children of this world. And that gap is increasing. And that's what's happening. And that's what I want you to see there the clear difference that God is opening up the gap. And the story that he told me was Daniel. He said Daniel was not one times, not two, not three. Three is ridiculously higher and better than the world. Not four, not five, but ten times wiser than the wisest in the land. And he was made master over everybody. And that's you. And that's what he told me to tell you. He said your life, this is his words, I'm telling you right now, this is him speaking because I wrote it down on these two pieces of paper. He said, there is a spirit in you that can take you like a rocket into your desired destiny in 24 hours. He said, your life can be completely turned around in 24 hours by the spirit of wisdom that is domiciled in you. Because Christ in you is the wisdom and the power of God. And if he is in you, what's your problem? I'll tell you what your problem is. You're not allowing him out. You see, when Pastor Ronald tells you to speak your future and you're not speaking it. Because if you were speaking it, you would see it. I'm seeing it. He's no respecter of any persons. You are holding him captive in you. The creator, the same one that put the sun and the moon in place is inside you. The wisdom and the power of God. And I'm going to show you how he works in some people here. And how some businesses are prospering using the wisdom and the power of God in them. And he will take you like that car, like a rocket into your future. Like he did us. And so the message title was, the church is about to take the stage. And be the light of the world that Christ died for. You see, because when he died, the Spirit of God came down into those men. The same men that were hiding, 120 of them. They were hiding in the upper room. But the moment the glory of God came on them, they changed into other men. Like that car. And they sped forward at such a rate. The Spirit of God changed them. And it has to change you. And so there is a unique... Don't just sit here waiting and writing for a revelation. There must be an impartation. There must be. Because when he was preaching in Cornelius' house, the Bible says that the Spirit of God fell on all of them that were in the house. That means something supernatural can happen here tonight. You don't have to have hands laid on you. You just receive it from above. Your life. Your life. 
Christ in you, the hope of glory. What glory? Is God rich? Tell me. Is he in you? What's the problem? The same wisdom that created the sun, the moose, put the moon, put the solar system in its place is the wisdom that he used and it's in you now. Now. It's in you for business. It's in you for family. It's in you for your career success. It's in you to know what to do, when to do. And Jesus said, I know what to do. It's in you. Now. Not later, not waiting for it. And so what he's come to do is to fire your engines for flight. I'm going to leave a document because I don't think we're going to get there. But it's called sustaining this flight. Because when you're in the air, you have to have fuel to sustain it. Because otherwise you come down. And so many people do that. They're like shooting stars. And I'll show you a few of them. They come up and then they die. And I told you, I think we did a conference here about integrity. When you're up there, you must have the integrity to keep you up. Because otherwise you come down. So God has planned for there to be a clear difference between you and the rest of the world. And that is what that shows. So on the next slide, you'll see that it means recognizably different. And those words are like this. It means clear cut, well defined, marked and unmistakable that you are different. That means in some conversations, you do not get involved. I'm telling you the wisdom of God. There are some things that you don't laugh at. When they're telling jokes, when they, I'm in companies, we're sitting in a boardroom. They are laughing and joking and telling crazy things. I do not partake of that. I sit recognizably different. In a crowd... Can they single you out? Can they pick you out of a crowd and say, this is the son of a king? That's where he's taking you to. And I'll give you an example of that. The difference must be clear. We are not talking about a photo finish. I think there's a photo finish there. Let's look at the next one with race horses. You know they have something called a photo finish. Ah, did he win, didn't he? Or a rugby game. Did he get the try? I don't know. Let's have a replay. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about an undisputed champion. No dispute that this is the son of a king. That he walks like a king. That he dresses like a king. He drives like a king. He's got the king with him. His house, his children, his family. Everything is kingdom. That's what we're talking about. When you walk in, you walk in with the presence of God. And he lives through you. His wisdom is through you. His health is through you. His wealth comes through you. And he lives his life in you. So this looks like this. When they're in lack, you're in superabundance. When they're sad, you're unexplainably joyful. When they're fearful, you're in faith. When they're in, sitting in darkness, you have lights. When the darkness gets dark, you shine brighter. When they are sick, you are healthy. When they mourn, you dance. And when they're defeated, you are victorious. That's what we're talking about. How do we get there? My little girl, I'm going to tell you, I'll stop and just tell you this. I'll tell you about a clear difference. So she went to school two days ago. I haven't started this clock. Let me just reset this clock because I think I'm, praise God. I'm a little over here. So we went to, she went to school two days ago. And um, there was a little girl that they were playing tennis. There was, there were a class of them, 24. And we're talking about a clear difference. And they all hit the ball, they hit the ball. And the last girl that came up, she's got a problem. She can't hit the ball. So the girl that is the top of the class says to her, go and sit on the loser's bench. And she offends and hurts this little girl. Well, Lydia got to school this morning, and the teacher calls her in. She says, hey, um, Lid, uh, Emma's actually going to the principal's office. I said, the principal's office? My girl, what, what could possibly be wrong? She says, no, no, she's got an appointment with the principal. So the teacher then comes to her, and the mother is there, and the mother's in tears. And I think, what in the world is going on? 
It turns out that Emma went and sat with this little girl, although she had hit the ball and she was in the other group. She left that group. She went and joined this girl and says, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. Out of 24, out of 24, this is what I'm trying to show you. Out of 24 people, one stands for righteousness. No, the whole church will stand. The whole church. And so let's look at a picture, a couple of pictures of distinct and clear differences. David was one. David slayed the giant and they came back singing and dancing. Saul has saved, saved his, uh, he's killed a thousand and David his tens of thousands. How big is that gap? Let's look at a few. Here's another one. Clear difference. But what was different about David? I'll tell you what. He had oil poured on his head. And as soon as the oil was poured on his head, the spirit of wisdom, counsel, and might, and understanding, and making him a quick understanding came upon him. There's one spirit we're going to look at tonight, I believe, which is a major key. It's the spirit of wisdom. That's what came on his head. And so the next boy that we look at, incidentally, David, do you remember that David wasn't even on his family register? It doesn't matter where you are. Because he'll pick you out of a crowd. He'll find you. Don't worry. Don't worry. They just get, David comes and says, look, listen boys, I'll take care of this big guy. They said, hey, listen, leave them alone. He said, I'll do it. And so he defeated him and he was raised to the top. Another one, Daniel. Daniel was clearly different. In wisdom, he was different. He wouldn't eat what they ate. He wouldn't bow to what they bowed and he wouldn't stop praying until the job was done. Distinctly different. Distinctly different. What about this guy? Uzziah, he's 16. Second Chronicles 26. This boy is reigning at 16. He has an army of 307,000 men. He's got to lead 2,600 leaders to lead that army. He's 16 years old. He is clearly different. God has shown him how to make engines. Engines. Where did that wisdom come from? No school in that day. Engines. The Bible says this, that he produced engines of war and they were manufactured in Jerusalem. That's 2 Chronicles 26, 11 to 15. The Bible says that he became so famous that the Lord helped him wonderfully until he was very powerful. But, it says, that at that point he became proud and he went straight down. That's why I said you've got to have character. And the Bible says that he took over the duties of a priest and he started to burn the censer at the altar and he thought he was so big now but God warned him he said no don't do that that's not your job and what did he do he did it and what happened the next minute he was white with leprosy shooting star can you see them what about Isaac Isaac's field I told you before that field was so plentiful, it had the blessing of the Lord on it. He was producing beans, cabbage, corn, grain, whatever you name it. He was producing in that field. How do you think that wealth transferred? The Bible says that in this land, there was a severe famine that overshadowed the land. But God speaks to Isaac and he says, I want you to stay in that land. I'm going to show you how to farm my way. He takes everything from the king. He makes the king poor. In fact, the king said this, you have become much mightier than we. He said this, for I am the king. I do not have a home with as many possessions as you do. In fact, it's a disgrace that you should be wealthier than me. Everything that he needed was in Isaac's field. Who do you think they came to? It's a picture of Joseph. They came to Isaac. Why? He had the beans. And they had to eat. That's the way it works. How did Isaac produce such good crops? There was an empowerment upon him. A spirit of wisdom which is coming on you now. Because the Bible says in Ezekiel 2 verse 2. It says that as he spoke. The spirit of the Lord went forth and entered them. You can receive it right now. Receive that spirit of wisdom. So I receive it. I receive it. Yeah. Clearly different. The grace on Isaac's life disgraced the world. That's what happened. That's what happened. Clearly different. In fact, Daniel, it was said about Daniel this. Uh, 
in Daniel chapter 5, verse 11 to 12, there is a man in the kingdom in whom the spirit of the holy gods is. Thy father, in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him. That means Christ in you, the hope of glory. Daniel didn't have Christ in him. He had him on him. You've got him in him. What's your problem? <laughs> You've got to release him. You've got to receive him. You've got to release him. What about this guy? George Washington Carver. Lord Jesus. Now here is a man. This man, what he does is God gifts this guy. And he gives him a special ability. He gives him a special ability to be able to interact with plants. He takes a peanut and God gives him the in ingenuity to be able to separate a peanut and make 300 products from one peanut. How many can you make? I'm just asking. How many can you make? If you took a peanut and you sat down and you asked God, Lord, show me this. How many can you make? And so what happened is he devised this. And the reason he devised this is because the farmers of that time were farming cotton. The cotton was stripping all the fields. So he said, listen, if I plant peanuts, peanuts will renew the soil. Sound like Isaac? Peanuts will renew the soil. And so what I'll do is I'll rotate the crops on this field. And I'll renew the soil year on year. We'll grow cotton, then we'll move it to that field, and then we'll grow peanuts. And then he found out that you can also do it with sweet potatoes. And so he created this empire, not that he was interested in the money because he said he didn't want it, but he created an empire of 500 billion on sweet potatoes and peanuts as a byproduct, not only solving their problem of cotton, because their cotton never grew faster. But the point that I'm trying to make with him is he said this, he said that he would go into what he called God's little workshop. And the Bible says that this man, I mean, the, 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 he, he went into this workshop. He never took any books. He never took any Bibles. He never took anything. What he did was he went in there with the products and he closed the door and he said, Lord, show me what is in this peanut. That's all he did. That's all he did. And God downloaded what was in that peanut. In fact, he took him through a whole lot of steps. He said, listen, ask something. He asked him, why were we created? And God said, no, 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 narrow it down. Narrow it down. Then he said, look, okay, here's a peanut. What can I get out of this peanut? And so God showed him 300 products and he changed. He changed the world. In fact, he changed the world to a point. Let's just look at him next slide. He was able to derive rubber out of a plant and him and Henry Ford became personal friends because of that one invention he took a weed out of the out of the ground and he made rubber from that isn't that amazing the spirit of God on him showing him instructing him but he said this he said that he never ever groped for methods in other words he was never ever confused God showed him how to separate that plant and make it into um, tires. Let's look at this. One more slide. Let's look at this guy. Right, here's a guy. Now this guy was called the dumbest of the dumb. In fact, they said he made Gideon look stupid. I don't know if you've watched that movie, but it's called Gifted Hands, and it might help you to watch that movie. But what happened is this guy here was, they said he was so dumb that he would be the dumbest in the whole world if they had to compare him to everybody. This man is a top neurosurgeon. In other words, he operates on the mind, the brain. This guy, Ben Carson, was the first guy to separate Siamese twins. He sat there for a number of days not knowing how to do it. And in his, in his document that he wrote, he said that he prayed and he asked God, how do I separate this? 
and a spirit of wisdom came upon him and said, I want you to take out so much of this, so much of that, and so much of that. And what will happen is this child will end up being not affected. Isn't that amazing? Working on the mind. In fact, they said that this car gives, they described him, I wrote this down. He is described as a man that has given many people a chance to live. Sounds like God. It's Christ in him operating. Uh, I know how to to do that. Yeah, yeah. Do that, do that, do that. In fact, God even told him, he said, listen, these kids are going to bleed out. He said, no, not if we stop their hearts for one hour, their brains won't be affected. How did he know that? Where did he get that information from? I'll tell you where. The great physician on him, in him, working through him. Same can be with you. You just got to hear it. You just got to believe it and know who you are. That's it. And so this is how I believe that the end time church is going to gain ascendancy. It's going to come up. It's going to come up. He said this. He said, God endows me with wisdom. God endows me with wisdom. So how does he do this? How do these guys do this? Let's look at the next slide. There it is. The Holy Spirit. The engine for supernatural flight. You see, he's made up of seven spirits. But one of those spirits, you'll find that in Isaiah 1, 11. One of, uh, 11 verse 2. One of those spirits is the spirit of wisdom. That's the same spirit that we're talking about. And the Bible says that it will make you of quick understanding. I say that humbly. I think i got to stand at seven. I think I've got to stand at seven. But I can tell you something. In theology, I've got honors. How is that possible? How is it possible? How is it possible? Two Bible schools. How is it possible? In school, I couldn't read a lick. At 29, I arrived. I gave my heart to Jesus. Something came on me. Something came on me, not only for theology, but for business. For the ability to work figures. For the ability to work media like I've never seen before. He gave me strategies. There are businessmen sitting here that need strategies. He is the master strategist. He knows the way out of any situation. He is the spirit of God. And he do it for you. He'll do it for you like he did it for me. The Bible says this. The Lord by wisdom has founded the earth. Now, is it important? The Lord by wisdom has founded the earth and by understanding he has established the heavens. Proverbs 3 verse 9. He's established the heavens by wisdom. How important is the spirit of wisdom? How important? How manifold are thy works, O God? In wisdom thou hast made them all. Every exploit of your father is by wisdom. Every one of them. In business, we use this like a scalpel. If I've got a difficult job to do on the computer, say I've got an imposition to do, you don't know what that is, but I've got a job to do. I will sit down before, not every time, but if it is difficult and I cannot do it by myself, I'll say, Lord, please empower me to do this. He will show me a strategy that will outperform any printer anywhere around here. And that is how we have managed to gain accounts like Macro, like EverReady. This little David works out of a small small office built on my house. A garden studio turning over multi-millions. How is it possible? The spirit of wisdom. That is what I'm giving you now. You're receiving it right now. Right now. Right now. So he told us, he said, Clint, if you take one mil off of this particular job, just one mil, off the locking system, it doesn't affect the round. You will beat everybody. One millimeter. Just one. One mil. He knows even where one mil is. He says, Clint, if you change this EverReady line, they're all printing this way. I want you to stop that, my boy. There's seven processes here. You can do it in one. How are we gaining them? How are we gaining them? I don't phone clients. They're phoning me. How 
are we doing it? The wisdom of God. He says, I will fill your treasures. You don't have to do it. The blessing of the Lord, it brings wealth. You're still trying to find it. It's in the wisdom of God. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and adds no sorrow to you. This is what we're doing. We use When you gain access to this kind of wisdom, you can't help but become a star. Now what you need to do is sustain being a star. And that is, that is another thing all on its own. That is another thing all on its own. So let's look at this. Joseph emerged with that kind of wisdom. Do you remember? In fact, he was teaching all the senators that wisdom. This boy, where did he learn? Did he learn at slave school? At prison college? Where did he learn? Where? Where? No. Do yourself a favor. Look up the, there's a, there's a guy, I found a video. He's called the homeless Mozart. Now he has a guy that is operating in the spirit of wisdom. The homeless Mozart. Google it when you get home. He plays the piano. He never learned a note. And he plays it so beautifully. They're taking YouTube videos of him. They're putting him on. And he plays such a beautiful tune. How? Think about a bushman. How's he painting that? Where did he get that from? School, bushman school. <laughs> we are not talking about the wisdom that you are learning in college. This is not that. This is the wisdom of God that says when you give away, you'll increase. But if you hold it, you'll decrease. <laughs> It's not natural. And the Bible tells you that. I think it's in, it's, in, uh, it's in Job 28. I think I got it on the screen somewhere here, but it's further away. But uh, let's look at that. Job 28. Let's go there if we can. My Lord. What wisdom is this? What wisdom is this? It's in Mark 6 verse 2. It says, what wisdom is this? And whence has this man this wisdom and these things? Where is this boy getting this stuff from? And what wisdom is this that is given unto him that such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Where is it from? Can we put it on the screen? It's a little bit further. There is a wisdom that descends from above that makes all its carriers above all. There is. But where shall this wisdom be found? I think it's on the slides, ladies. I think it's on the slides. But that's okay. That's okay. It says there is a wisdom that descendeth not from above, which is earthly, sensual, and devilish. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, and full of mercy, full of good fruits. There's four kinds of wisdom there. There's four kinds of wisdom there. Next slide. Next slide. There's four kinds of wisdom. Earthly is a child that is born, has earthly wisdom. They know where to feed. They're not putting it in their ear. They take it to their mouth. Every child has that. Earthly wisdom. Sensual is stuff that you learn. Devilish wisdom is occultic forces and witchcraft and so on and so forth. But the wisdom that is from above, that is what we are talking about, is above all. And not only is it above all, it is far above. It's the one that produces witty inventions. Joseph carried this wisdom. And he says, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Genesis 41 verse 39. In fact, Pharaoh said this. There is no comparison to what you carry that I can find in my realm. Daniel was made master to the point that the king bowed down to him and worshipped him because of this wisdom in him. But I can tell you what he was worshipping. He was worshipping the God of Daniel. And Daniel made it clear, I will not take not, nothing of this credit. It goes to my God. When this wisdom came on Solomon, he was said to be wiser than all men. All men. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much. And the Bible says that Solomon's wisdom excelled. And the wisdom of the children of the east country, it excelled them, and all the wisdom of Egypt. He was wiser than all men. How? Wisdom. Did he study for it? No. It was given to him overnight. 
And the operations of wisdom, I'm going to show you. Next slide, very quickly, and then we're done. Thank you, Lord. Next slide. Operations of the Spirit of Wisdom. First of all, it's a gift from heaven. And you can see that in 1 Kings 4, verse 29. It's a gift. And so what do you do with a gift? You ask for a gift. You ask for a gift. What does the gift do? It quickens your understanding. The Bible says this. It says there... Um, uh, let me show you where it is. Ephesians 1 verse 17. It says this, that the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. He may give unto you. It's a gift you receive it tonight. And revelation in the knowledge of Him. God is the giver of this gift. The second thing is, it's searched out. When I went to Jobig this week, I search out wisdom. I go to bookshops. I go to bookshops. There was, a, there was a place that we were wanting to find. I found it. I found it. I went there. And I bought a pile of books. I could have gone to Woolworths and eaten lunch. Here's my lunch. And my wife said, Oh, you brought back more books. Yes. <laughs> yes. Why? Wisdom. Wisdom is searched out. Whatever subject you need wisdom on, go and search the book out. Find it. Read it. Discover the secrets in it. Consume it. Work it. Do it. And receive the benefit of it. That's what we're talking about. The Bible says that our wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. If I tell you some of the inventions that God has given us, it's come from this kind of wisdom. The Bible said that Daniel was so gifted, but it also said this, Ah, Daniel, understood by books. It's time to read Read, read. In fact, do you know the lion, Benson Idiosa? Do you know the lion, Benson Idiosa? Raising the dead, going, doing amazing feats. T.L. Osborne arrived, there were seven books. He was in a hut. And he gave him these books and he said, this hut is not for a king. He came back two years later, he had read those, obviously he had read those books and he had 600 churches from living in a hut. So what is in books? What is in books? A desperate search for knowledge. That's what you need. Make discoveries. My wife will tell you on children, she searches out and makes discoveries about children. And working with our children, how else will you do it? The last one is, ask for it. Ask for it. Ask you of the Lord, reign in the letter in the time of latter rain and the Lord will make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. Ask him for this wisdom. The Bible says if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God and he will give it to you liberally. Uh, and that is in James 1 and verse 5. We are out of time. I have left another whole sermon here for you that are interested and this is how to keep this oil fresh. And I probably think that is probably the main part of this message. But it just cannot be done in half an hour. But I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to give it to Melanie. She's going to maybe print it out if those that are desiring it or email it or whatever it is. But that is so important. How do I keep this oil fresh? How do I keep this, this fire burning in these engines that I can keep flying and flying? And some of them are... It takes wisdom. This stuff you don't just find. I'll just read you the headlines. Another one is it takes consecration. It is impossible to sustain the anointing, sustain the anointing if you're living a life that is outside of what God has asked you to do. Samson lost all his beauty. He was an amazing specimen of a man. And he lost it all. He became a mockery. In fact, he became a toy in the enemy's hands. In fact, his birth was announced just like Jesus. Yeah? It takes fellowship. From this altar, there is fire burning. If your fire has gone out, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord is a, is a candle. If your fire has gone out, you need to be in fellowship. In fact, fire wards off the enemy. If you go in camping, what are you going to do? Put a bonfire. Why? Because the animals are out there. Do they come to fire? No. Let it burn down. See what they do. They'll come to you. So the fire keeps them away. So sickness is creeping back in your life. Why?
because the fire is not burning. Fan the fire. Get it. It's yours. Take it. It's fellowship. Keep the fire burning. That's what the apostles did. The fire came on them. What did they do? They went from house to house to house, breaking bread, preaching the gospel, keeping the fire burning. Fellowship. Fellowship takes dedication and it takes staying faithful. If you are faithful over something little, unless God has left the throne, he will put you onto five cities. So let's pray. Let's ask God. Remember, Joseph as well was faithful over a scrubbing brush. (laughs) What did he end up with? The entire world. Thank you, Father. Father, we give you the praise, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here. We acknowledge you as the guest, spirit of wisdom and understanding. We thank you so much. We thank you for your word that is forever poured out of this altar. Father, I give you praise for the word that comes out of this altar. And I thank you, Father, that there is going to come teachings out of here that this earth has not even seen before. In fact, there is a special grace coming upon this altar now in Jesus' name that these people will be imparted with such wisdom. Not only from tonight, but every day after. Their lives. The Bible says that wisdom is the principal thing. In fact, it's number one. And as they receive wisdom, and as they apply wisdom, I thank you, Lord, their lives will be changed forever. I thank you, Lord, for a fresh wind to come on them of wisdom. I thank you, Father, that it is imparted now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, as you are here, as you have heard them, as you know the intents of their heart. I pray, Lord, that you answer them in Jesus' name. For those of you, for those of you that have lost your crown, you are divine champions. For those of you that the enemy has stolen your crown, I want you to release, release, release those people tonight that maybe you are holding something against. And as you do that, there is a flood of wisdom coming to you. Father, we recover our crowns tonight. The crown of glory, the crown of honor, the crown of our families, Father. The crown of our mothers and fathers, Father. The crown of our careers, the crown of our businesses. Where the enemy has come into businesses, where he's destroyed, where he's taken away, Father. Recover it tonight in Jesus' name. I pray for a special grace on businessmen here tonight. I pray for strategies, Father. Just like you did me, Lord. I pray that you wake them up. Wake them up. Like you do me, Father. Wake them up. And as they get up, and as they start to write the words of the kingdom, and the strategies of the kingdom, I thank you, Lord, that everything on that page will come to pass. There are businessmen here that can change the world. Right here. In this house. Because your father is in you. And your father is not a small thinker. There are businessmen here that are thinking way too small. And he says he wants you to expand that. In fact, there's a word that he told me on Sunday. And the word is this. Victory. 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 Victory in marriages, victory in careers, victory in your children's lives, victory in health, victory in success in every area, victory in business. And I'm not talking about common business. I'm talking about the biggest of the big. David went for Goliath. You that are in business, stop thinking small. You go for the Goliaths. Because as you go there, this spirit of wisdom, I'm telling you now, This spirit of wisdom is able to handle those big guys in the boardroom. He knows what to say, how to say it, how to do it. He knows all of that. And he's prepared it already. All you need to do is put on your courage suit and walk in. And let the spirit of God take over. And I can tell you, business is coming into your life like you have never experienced before. In fact, your eyes have not seen it. Your ears have not heard it. And it is not even entered into your thinking. That's why he says, expand your thinking. You think you're too small. You're thinking too small. He says, expand that thinking. 
and you will extend this kingdom faster than you can say, I am. Father, we give you praise for everyone here seated here tonight that has received this word. We honor you tonight, Lord, and we thank you. You are the giver of life. And we thank you, Father, for being here with us. We thank you for the word that has been shared. And I pray, Lord, that they will see a clear difference between them and the rest of the world. That that gap will open up quickly, Father, just like that car in the beginning. And they will never forget this word. In Jesus' name, amen.